What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a range test on my 2023 Tesla Model 3 with the LFP battery. I will be driving 350 miles today. I will take off in a bit in this car. I will charge it to 100% and we're gonna do a warm weather range test. A real life test, what you can expect from your car to give you an actual range in the warm weather with your AC on, with you driving at a, around 80 to 85 miles an hour uh, on the highway, um, road tripping in between states. Um, we will look at the range from 100% charging from home to the first supercharger, and then we're going to charge to 100, around 100%. And then we're going to take off and go to the second charger. And then from the second charger, we're going to uh, take off to our destination. And we will look at the consumption. We will look how many miles we get between charges. We will look at all the aspects of driving in the warm weather. And I will give you guys a deep, detailed, uh, thorough uh, review of an actual real life range test uh, for you to consider whether you're looking to buy one or you have one, you want a road trip in it or whatever the case may be for your knowledge. So let's, it's the car, let's get it plugged in, topped off to 100%, completely charged, and then we will uh, start our road trip. Okay, so we are plugged in, as you can see, the light is green, we are fully charged, and the charge limit is set to 100%. And as you can see, there you go, we are fully charged, 100% charging complete, and what, uh, I'm gonna do the only thing is I will have the AC set at 67 the whole way and what I will do I will set the car to chill mode um, I'll have the steering as sports and I'll have the stopping at hold so that way chill mode will hopefully help us save some power again fully charged we are ready to go let's hit the road Okay, so I'm taking off here and the car says 269 miles and it's gonna be 122 miles to the first charger there. So we'll see how accurate is that with the AC set at 67. Uh, we are still at 100% right there and we have 122 miles. When we get there, we'll see what the mileage difference, of course there's gonna be a mileage difference uh, so we're gonna subtract the 122 from the 269 and see what the mileage difference is when we get to the charger Okay, so currently driving on the highway uh, Going about 80 miles an hour. We just hit 100 miles driven and we are at 48% with the AC set at 67 or 68 the entire way and we are on our way to the charging station to have 37% left in 20 miles. Uh, so far, it has really been accurate and consistent. Uh, plus, minus 3, 4, 5% for the, the use of the AC and going above, you know, the normal 65 mile an hour speed. Uh, but it's it's been really uh, comfortable and uh, kind of easy on the mind, you know, no range anxiety, it's been accurate, it calculates the usage including the AC. So uh, with 47% uh, uh, left and me being uh, 20 miles from the charger, uh, it's really not bad, it's, it's really been uh, good. This car is the, uh, it has the LFP battery, it's the 2023 Model 3. Uh, so this is for your reference in case you're thinking of one or you have one you're wondering uh, it should be all right I always always um, uh, Recommend to have at least 30% uh, Calculated for when you drive to a charger. So let's say you leave at 100% always pick the charger that's uh, You're gonna have when you get there at least 30% battery or more uh, and that's that's for your peace of mind. You don't want to be fighting uh, percentage and uh, range anxiety and all that But I mean the performance has been really uh, smooth and uh, the, the, the miles uh, Now we're 102 since I started talking <laughs> And we have 47 percent um, Really not bad really accurate. So I I would say at with the same driving behavior the AC on uh, 47% I would say to completely dead to 0% I would have another uh, 97 miles so I would say 200 miles uh, this is an estimate and so with that being said 
I will uh, get back with you when I get the, to the charger and we'll see uh, what's the percentage uh, and the mileage uh, left for us when we get there. Okay, pulling up to the chargers here and it looks like there's plenty of room, which is awesome. All right. Okay, so I just made it here, 122 miles, 38% left. So the calculation was about 4% um, off, which is really not bad considering the AC is on and I'm going faster than the normal, uh, you know, calculated for speed. So here's what we did since last charge. We used 36 kilowatt hour and we, we are at 293 watt, uh, watt hour per mile. So about about 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour which is really really good it's super efficient uh, so now I want to plug it in see how fast it charges and how long it takes and uh, we'll get going uh, just one thing to keep in mind so the entire trip the temperature was at 100 degrees outside so you know the AC has been working really hard too so uh, let's get it plugged in and uh, see how it does okay so just plugged in and it's ramping up speed here let's see how fast it goes going up there okay so it maxed out for now at 145 kilowatts uh, it's charging 630 miles per hour and it looks like it's already at 40% increasing charge. Uh, I'll let you know we're at 1218 right now. I'll let you know how long it takes to 99 or 100%. Okay, so we are now at 94% and it has been 23 minutes. So 23 minutes, 95%. We charged about, uh, I would say 55, uh, yeah, 58% in 23 minutes so it says five minutes to 100 percent the charging speed have dropped uh, from about 150 to around 50 um, it does get slower as you approach the charging limit so that is normal uh, i think uh, there was a successful charging session uh, so far we have charged 37 kilowatt hour and the cost is 13 dollars 78 cents at 37 cents Per kilowatt hour uh, usually supercharging is is a lot more expensive than charging at home at home I pay six cents per kilowatt hour uh, here it's 36 37 cents so it's 30 cents more which is significant Signi so this this charging session would barely cost me three dollars or four dollars maybe at home so uh, with that being said I will let it finish uh, four minutes to 100% and that's gonna be um, uh, 28 minutes so at 28 minutes we charged 63 percent and then uh, we'll hit the road and be on our way okay so I have been driving for 36 miles uh, since the first charging stop uh, I did charge to about 97 98 percent and then I left uh, but for whatever reason my consumption on uh, these 36 miles is extremely high I'm not sure if it's uh, uh, the temperature outside is 105 uh, it was 100 before and um, I've been driving the same and really didn't have any crazy uphills or downhill or anything like that okay so uh, I was I was saying that if you don't charge these LFB batteries to 100% um, they will not be 100% uh, calibrated uh, according to uh, the research that I read online that these cars need to be charged continuously charged to 100% to help calibrate uh, the state of charge uh, calibrate the computer the, the BMS to know exactly where the state of charge is again on the next charging uh, stop I will charge to 100% until the car stops charging I will not disconnect unplug it 
before it's 100% charged. So my consumption now is uh, 380 watt hour per mile, uh, which was about 300, 290 to 300 before uh, the first charging stop. So um, uh, we'll drive to the next charging stop and then uh, we'll charge to 100% and then we'll uh, get going. Okay, so uh, we just used 50% of charge. I left at 97%, now we're at 47%, so that's 50% and guess how many miles we drove. Right there, 71 miles. 71 miles compared to uh, 103 miles in the pre on the previous charge. With the same driving behavior, same driving conditions, the same AC uh, setup. Uh, the temperature outside is five degrees higher <clears throat> really 30 miles is um, is uh, quite significant on 50 percent of the battery so uh, again we'll stop at the second supercharged station or stop and then uh, i will charge to 100 percent this time and uh, we'll keep on driving and uh, i'll get back with you guys when we get to the uh, supercharger okay so pulling up here on the second charging stop this one should have 32 open out of uh, 46 which is quite a bit okay so I just got here and we drove 118 miles and the consumption was total of 353 watt hour per mile we do have 22% left and uh, so we total total use was about 75% for 118 miles on this drive uh, the mileage left is 60 miles so I'm gonna get out here and plug in and uh, we'll see how it does okay just plugged in and uh, let's watch it ramp up here uh, it should be faster than 150 because it's at a lower uh, percentage Okay, 164, 172 kilowatt, 171. Okay, so it looks like it's stabilized at 171, and uh, it's gonna get slower uh, again at, as the per percentage increases. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna let it charge to 100% this time. I'm not gonna unplug it before it completely finishes and stops. Uh, if I go to charging. The cost here is 33 cents per kilowatt hour. So it's a little bit cheaper than the first stop, which is good. It's always good. Um, okay, so that's it. Let it charge and I'll catch up with you guys when it's about 100%. Okay, so it actually just finished charging. It says charging complete 100%, 269 miles. We did, the charging cost was $17.39 from 20-ish percent to 100%. And we received, I believe, uh, 54 or 55 or 53, something like that. Uh, let's see if we can check. Uh, no, so we just received, I think, 54 kilowatt hours. So that's, we are good to go. Now I'm gonna start driving and uh, see how, what the consumption is. Now, I think we should be good to go. Let's see what the consumption is. I will drive exactly the same. I'll try my best, so let's do it. Okay, so I have finally made it five hours drive, a total of 340 miles. So after the second charge, even though we charged to 100%, consumption was still really, really high. Uh, we drove 93 miles, we lost 60% from 100% down to 40. Um, honestly, if, if you calculate 93 miles uh, for 60% of the battery, so for 100% you're talking about 152 miles uh, total range. So this car is advertised at uh, 272, so you're talking just about 45% um, or a little more loss to accessories and uh, other things other than actual driving. Um, I don't know if they expect everyone to drive at 55 or 65, but for road tripping, uh, we all know this is not um, easily 
um, you know you can't just drive 55 or 65 on the highway all the time um, so maybe it's a combination of higher speed AC um, the weather it's the summer the AC is working hard but but I mean 55% of the advertised range for me personally I mean it, it's not very good because road tripping just pretty much sucked if I have to charge every 130 miles so with that being said um, um, the, maybe this will be a, a better fit for someone else but myself it's just the range is just too low uh, there is an advertised long range model 3 but it's just 50 miles more and you will probably lose another 40% of that to other things uh, that that are running in the car so, uh, so with that being said um, um, I really hope uh, this video is informational uh, and informative and beneficial to you in making up your decision if you want to buy a Tesla the range is not going to be exactly what you see on the screen uh, there's many factors that play a, that play in, in how much range you get actually driving um, and other things like that uh, hopefully uh, this video is helpful to you if it is please give it a big thumbs up please subscribe down there and i will catch you in the next one peace